a choice right now, right now, between fear and love. It's just a rock. Out of the dark night of ignorance and into the shining light of truth. Expanding reality. A population of citizens capable of critical thinking. We don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. There's a, a level of reality where everything dissolves into an ocean of energy. We empower our experience by insisting on our authenticity. That's very profound. Very Expanding reality. Welcome to Expanding Reality. I am your host, Brandon Thomas. On this episode, guys, Mitchell Nicholas Gerber comes by and talks to us about the organ harvesting against the Falun Gong practitioners that has been perpetrated by the CCP in China for decades now, and it is really fucked up. So heavy episode, guys, uh, just kind of a heads up there. Also a heads up that there is a video uh, presentation that goes along with this. So definitely check out the show notes for expandingrealitypodcast.com as well as all of the ways to find Mitchell. There is a wealth of research and uh, resource links for you guys in this particular episode, but it will not be on YouTube. YouTube does not deserve this conversation, so we're not even going to fuck with it. Uh, But like I said, go to expandingrealitypodcast.com, linked in the show notes. That's where you can find the full video presentation for this uh, as well as all of our affiliate links guys so check those out and uh, without any further ado actually let's just get right to this conversation with Mitchell Nicholas Gerber and we're just going to roll with it rock it and groove it and the show is going to be fantastic as Jim Morrison said is everybody in I said is everybody in because the show is about to begin I love it. And on that note, well, let's do this, man. Uh, Mitchell Nicholas Gerber, you are hanging out. You have some fascinating information, man. And I am super pumped to talk to you. Absolutely grateful. I wish that you and I met under different circumstances, like that we could talk about that there's new information uh, about a breakaway civilization. And we know about the secret space, you know, organizations and stuff like that, secret space programs and time travel, but we're not. We are meeting under the auspice of something much darker that needs to be talked about. And that's why we're here. So if you don't mind, my brother, just uh, introduce yourself to the audience and uh, let's get to this horrible, horrible story. Brandon, man, it's just such a pleasure to be on uh, your incredible show, Expanding Reality. Uh, You guys are just really knocking it out of the park. Such courageousness in the world of such misinformation and deception. And folks, you know, buckle up because I want to take you on a joy ride as well as a heavy ride down the rabbit hole of reality. So with that note, thank you for letting me come on your show, man. I appreciate it. Honors hours. I'm honestly serious. Thank you so much for this and for what you do, dude. This is incredible. So, guys, like he said, buckle up. This is going to be heavy. Um, and I will mention this in the intro for everyone listening. Absolutely. And I have uh, all the links and I have all the, uh, the credible sources for your audience as well and all the reports that they would like to read. And, uh, you know, this beautiful spiritual movement as well for all the yoga enthusiasts out there and all the Tai Chi people who really like, you know, that kind of wellness uh, uh, meditation. This is also a show you don't want to miss because at the end of the, uh, the broadcast, I will show you where you can go and learn this particular practice that has been so outlawed and targeted by the one and only, the Chinese Communist Party, which we're about to get into. So without further ado, Brandon, let's rock it. Let's roll. I have something that I would love to show you to just open up for people, because I think a visual tells a, and paints a, a picture of, a th- you know, that a thousand words can't. Um, and since we're in the digital age, um, I'll open with this uh, for the audience, what this particular practice is all about in terms of, um, before we talk about why the Chinese government or the communist regime targeted this practice, this is what we're about to talk to about. This is the ancient spiritual movement of Falun Gong. So just uh, bear with me for just a second, if I can uh, roll this clip, this would be great. Is it coming in loud and clear? Falun Dafa, also known as Falun Gong, is an advanced self-cultivation practice that improves mental and physical wellness through physical exercises and the development of one's character. 
In China, cultivation practices have a history of thousands of years and form the spiritual foundation of Chinese civilization. In 1992, Falun Dafa was introduced to the public by Master Li Hongzhu. The practice quickly spread because of its profound principles and proven health benefits. By 1999, with over 100 million practitioners. I just want to pro freeze it for just a second, Brandon. 100 million people practicing these slow moving exercises in China, very peaceful, nothing cultish or religious, a valued spiritual movement that really warmed and attracted the hearts of all walks of life in China from the highest ranking members of the Communist Party, mi uh, military soldiers, generals, uh, professionals, executives, celebrities, uh, more than half of upper class society, the rural villages, a hundred million people. And the estimates were documented by the Chinese government originally. And this took, off, took China by storm, became the life force of China through its exercises, as you're seeing. I'm just going to uh, mute the, the volume just to go back to show you the exercises. The simple meditation, as you see, sitting, the exercises. This is part of the standing exercises of Falun Gong, also known as Falun Dafa. This is the standing meditation where you hold four postures, very similar to Qigong. Well, this took, 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 took China by storm. As you can see, the ancient cultivation practices, has got nothing to do with cultic, cult, uh, cultish practices. It's the ancient ways of improving and enhancing the morality, the spiritual vitality, and the peace of mind, as well as the body wellness and the organ rejuvenation of the body. So this particular practice, Falun Gong, also known as Falun Dafa, uh, at the leadership of the uh, of this uh, wonderful teacher, uh, Mr. Li Hong Tzu, who is a, a nomination of, he was nominated for five Nobel Peace Prizes, took China by storm, um, where one out of every 12 Chinese national citizens were practicing, as you can see, in China, in the parks. And just through word of mouth, it was spreading like wildfire. And as you can see, these are the uh, the protests in uh, which we're going to get to in a minute. Why they're protesting the Chinese communist regime for violating the rights of these peaceful practitioners? As you can see, that are not cultish of all walks of life, very easy, very peaceful, as well as um, as uh, 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 free a free practice that was uh, you know really took as you said uh, uh, warmed the hearts of the Chinese people and opened their minds but then was outlawed and brutally persecuted by the CCP. And we can get into that in a moment, but that's it in a nutshell. It's called Falun Gong, also known as Falun Dafa. And um, I'll share the website where people can explore about it and learn about it and actually even practice it if they'd like for free. Absolutely, man. And uh, we are going to be linking a lot of stuff in the show notes, guys. So make sure that you check that out. Also, YouTube crowd, just go to the website. This will not be there. Uh, I, I noticed this when I was in China back in 2007 or eight. I can't remember, honestly, which year. Uh, but everywhere we went, I was in China for a month. I was in 28 different, um, 18 different cities in 28 days. And you would see people doing this everywhere. Uh, I, w I would remark on it because of the elderly were doing it. It was all kinds of people. But they were doing this Tai Chi style, Falun Gong style movements in the in the park everywhere and I was just so blown away by how people came together to be this active to just do these simple practices and then it really forms a sense of community and so it's it's interesting I've observed this in many cities across China myself so it's a fascinating practice oh absolutely amazing practice and I've had the liberty I'm a, I come from a Judeo Christian family Brandon I, I believe in God I'm a very spiritual person I love yoga and Tai Chi and Qigong so when I came across the spiritual movement when I was studying international business at the University of Georgia in 2001 about 22 years ago I was uh, you know I was uh, um, uh, attending the top business school I was uh, uh, my father invested a lot of money in me and I was about to uh, to intern. I was actually interning at a top uh, investment firm, but I wasn't feeling good with myself. I was partying a lot. I was drinking a lot. I wasn't feeling good. I was stressed out. I was the the, the president of this and the president of that club and university. You know how that is in the, in, in, when you go to university. Um, and I was just really feeling down. And one day when I was at a human rights fair in Athens, Georgia, um, which a lot of bands came out, REM came out of uh, out of uh, Athens, Georgia. There's a lot of prolific bands uh, that have come out of that uh, small little uh, music town. 
but there was these Chinese people with all the other Indian food and the Greek food and the, and, and the Native American arts and culture. Um, there, there was also these beautiful Chinese people uh, that were practicing these exercises, and I was very intrigued. And I, I heard about yoga. I was doing Kundalini yoga and Hatha yoga at the time. I loved the, 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 the movements and Tai Chi as well. And I was a Bruce Lee fan. I loved karate, man, when I was younger. So I was very intrigued by these Eastern arts and modalities. Um, so I walked up to the, to the table. I saw these uh, small little kids, these uh, you know, teenagers and uh, young, young students, uh, college students, and then elders practicing in sync with this beautiful movement, namely... Falun Gong, Falun Dafa. And I was like, hmm, interesting. Uh, and I looked at the pamphlets and I was like, oh, Falun Dafa or Falun Gong. Very interesting. Mind and body practice. And I was a little wary because I didn't want anything to interfere with my religious belief. And my, you know, I don't want anything cultish. I, I, I heard about certain cults that were expanding their evil influence. And I was like, you know, I want to slowly and surely and skeptically um, and cynically you know, find out what this is all about. So I was dabbling my toes in it. I was led to the uh, the park right at the university, in the university grounds, and I started these slow-moving exercises. And I was like, wow, man. All of a sudden, I felt these pops in my back. <laughs> and just immediately, my whole body started to feel very warm and extraordinarily comfortable. And I was like, wow, I'm feeling this in a very short amount of time. Give me more. So I went through the first exercise, which is stretching or Falun Gong or Falun Dafa, the second, third, fourth, and, and the fifth one. And at the end of the day, I was so blissed out, just very similar to the yoga, you know, that you do, like the, the power yoga, you come out there feeling blissed up. And I went back to the table and I was like, what the hell, excuse me, my language, what the hell is this? Stop the brutal persecution of Falun Gong or Falun Dafa practitioners. And I would see all these grotesque torture methods. And I was like, way to go, guys, for ruining my high, you know, my yeah. bliss high. You know, Brandon, and I was like, great, thanks so much. But I was like, well, this is important. No, we, we, I can't just be in sunshine and rainbow land. I've got to know the reality. I've got to understand the darkness of, of the world. And lo and behold, I realized that this spiritual movement, which I'm about to play you a clip of, uh, the persecution was commencing in China since, since 1999, where the Chinese government, under the, under the control of the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, which has now become a household name in every living room, I guess, before uh, people would think to yourself, well, what is the CCP? Is this an, an NBA uh, um, or NFL uh, new, new team on the line headed by Mark Cuban? What is this? But now they realize that this is the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, um, that is a reign of terror. And this particular totalitarian regime, Brandon and everybody, outlawed this practice and started to demonize it as some cult in order to send hundreds and thousands of these innocent practitioners because they had the healthiest organs after learning these exercises and following more of a compassionate, truthful, and tolerant lifestyle, as Tony Robbins and Ikok Tolle and other gurus and other uh, uh, health coaches and life coaches have said that a healthy mind, a healthy body, right? So following this philosophy, practicing these exercises led to incredible health, particularly of the organs, and the Chinese Communist Party did investigative medical research showing the health efficacy, and they outlawed it, persecuted, demonized it, scapegoated and slandered it to send hundreds and thousands of innocent Falun Gong petitioners to state-mandated hospitals, cutting out their organs while alive and selling their organs as the healthiest organs in the world, fueling a multi-billion, Brandon, B for brand and B for billion dollar business for the last 25 years and it's still going on to this day. Well, F for fuck that, because that's disgusting. And please feel free to use whatever kind of language you'd like, man. Um, uh, it's just disgusting. It's it's horrible. Uh, it's one of these things where you, you don't think that it happens, but it's right there in your face. And you do have the evidence for this. This has been going on for a long time. I've done the research on the stuff that you sent, and this is things... They just sicken you, man. Uh, and it's even more messed up that they are taking these people specifically because of how healthy they are. It's like 
they right. allow were allowed to do this for a little bit, get super healthy, and then something really messed up, like the um, CCP's organ harvesting plan and execution of that plan, uh, just brings these super healthy people that are really into their body. That's that's what all this stuff is. It's it's to get you in your body and get you very very healthy, uh, and then harvest them for that and against their will. And it's it's just so messed up, man. It's so messed up. Absolutely. I'd love to share you a clip. Uh, I've got many. I know I'm trying to condense 25 years of, or 22 years of investigative research into an hour, but if I may share with you and your audience uh, an incredible documentary. Please, and don't uh, feel rushed. We have all the time in the world that you need. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, well, folks, this is, um, this is from Soup Films, um, The Persecution of Fallen Gog. It's an award-winning documentary. Um, and take a look, take a listen. This was in China. In the late 90s, Chinese government surveys said up to 70 million people were practicing Falun Gong daily. Health bills were decreasing, crime rates were falling, and morality was rising. So why were these people targeted for elimination and organ harvesting? was one of the millions meditating in parks every day. There was a park across the street from my house. Because the first exercise site couldn't hold so many people anymore, it divided into the second, the third, the fourth. So at every street corner and in every park, you could see people practicing Falun Gong. There was from different kind in society. It was many policemen and military. It was just fundamental part of society at that time. And everybody knew somebody who practiced. Falun Gong is a traditional practice of self-cultivation, a practice of slow-moving exercises, meditation, and studying of the principles of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance, and trying to adopt those into your life. While morning exercises had always been popular in China, Falun Gong brought more than just health benefits. For thousands of years, the Chinese people have believed in Buddhas and Taoists and becoming an immortal. Falun Gong really dared to talk about these things. And immediately, people took it to heart. Oh, the true ancient good things of China have come back. However, after 50 years of political campaigns to destroy traditional beliefs, any revival of spirituality was seen as a threat to communist rule. Since I was 11, I experienced all of the Chinese Communist Party's campaigns. Group after group of good people were targeted. There was no faith, no truth. Falun Gong stood in stark contrast with communist ideology. So it would be very hard for it to be tolerated by the CCP. And as you can see, that's about two minutes and 41 seconds. I don't want to play the whole documentary. You can watch it. I'll give you the clip, the, 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 the link for the audience. But look at that in China, Brandon. That was China before 1998. That is how the morality was just increasing to such an extent that no other, no other spiritual movement, literally, brother, and folks that are listening and watching, and thank you so much because you know this is taking time out of your special daily lives, but it benefits you because this is about health and wellness, and everybody needs health and wellness and a spiritual vitality, especially in these very stressful times. So you can imagine when this grew to become the most popular spiritual movement in, in, in China, these suicide rates were going down, health and wellness rates were increasing, uh, the, the, the productivity rates in the factories, the relationships were all, uh, were all in harmony, and that is what the benefits of a beautiful, the righteous spiritual practice does. But then, unfortunately, like you saw, the, and I'm going, to, I'm going to play some more clips, that Falun Gong was, was, was banned. And there are three reasons because of that. So the, th the first reason uh, was because of the largest spiritual movement in China. One out of every 10 or 12 Chinese national citizens were practicing this. The number of people that were practicing Falun Gong or Falun Dafa, as it's also called, outnumbered the number of people in the Chinese Communist Party by 30 million people. 
And in China or in communism, as you know, and anyone who has lived under communism, as I do, as I speak now, and I'm on the front lines, guys. I'm on the border of China right now because I put I wanted to put myself into the mix of things and monitor it firsthand of how it really is. Um, the, in communist countries, it is ab absurd and, and, and is unheard of for any spiritual movement outside of the central party command to have that kind of power, that kind of uh, freedom. So it was outlawed because of that. Second, because of the stark contrast of ideology with Falun Gong or Falun Dafa, very similar to Hinduism, Judaism, Protestantism, Catholicism, et cetera, et cetera, you catch my drift, that teaches good things and Buddhism teaching to be good people, considerate to people, honest to people. The Communist Party is a reign of terror that has conquered in order to kill. So that was the stark con a contrast of ideology, evil versus good. And the last and most per uh, pertinent reason or prominent reason is because of the organs, the body feeling so good by practicing the Falun Gong and living more of a truthful, compassionate, tolerant lifestyle, the CCP targeted Falun Gong and wanted to make a fortune of their organs and has been doing so for the last 25 years now. Yeah, and it helps CCP too because it's uh, your, it's a threat to cigarette industries, alcohol. Uh, they're not you know eating bad foods. It's, it's a threat to all of the things that they've probably got a lot of money invested in as well as like the medical practices like here in the States. I mean, that, that's one of the things that they do is they keep a very unhealthy attempt to uh, and then keep the food poisoned and the medical industry propped up so one just begets the other. And if you break out of that system or you just choose not to participate in it, then you're a threat to that because now you're no longer engaging in something that they had control over you. They were making a lot of money off of you. And it's all about that C word control. And so when you just say, nope, I'm not participating in that, that's the biggest threat of all. Absolutely. And as you can see, I've got a, a clip lined up um, from the, the award-winning documentary, Hard to Believe. I want to share this with you. Um, this is from an 18 uh, award-winning documentary, Hard to Believe as well, and, I can, and people can just go to the website. I've, I've actually, when I clipped and edited this, uh, this, um, this clip, I have two of them from the documentary. It's free of charge, by the way. Um, you can actually go to the website, but take a look at this. This is, this is frightening, what the CCP has been doing. And this is a global enterprise. This is a forced organ harvesting on transplant demand. In a matter of weeks to a matter of days, reducing waiting times from four to eight years for kidneys, livers, pancreases, hearts, to reduce them to a matter of days. Um, and, and, and this is what they've been doing to the Falun Gong, also to the Uyghur Muslims, the House Christians, and the Tibetans. But the largest victims are from the Falun Gong. Take a look at this, Brennan. This is shocking, and everybody has listening. One of the worst crimes in history began taking place in hospitals throughout the country as organ transplants suddenly began to skyrocket. We've been asked to investigate allegations that uh, there has been harvesting of organs of Falun Gong in China. Our bottom line conclusion after considering everything as best we could was that the allegations are true. I began conducting comprehensive interviews with medical professionals, Chinese law enforcement personnel, and over 50 refugees from the Laogai system. But I estimate that 65,000 Falun Gong were murdered for their organs from 2000 to 2008. Essentially what organ harvesting means is they're taking Falun Gong practitioners literally like cattle, holding them in prison camps, testing their blood and other vital organs, and when someone comes into the country that needs a heart, a liver, a kidney, they find a match, they take the Falun Gong practitioner, extract their organs, of course killing them in the process. People who are expecting this to sort of just be solved naturally by all we have to do is sit back and they'll fix it, this is wrong. The West has to take a role. And the one role the West can do is say, these are our values. We cannot go beyond this. There are certain lines we can't cross. This is a red line. That's an absolute red line. Enver Toti, the surgeon turned bus driver, says it's been 20 years since he removed the organs from that live prisoner. It remains a mystery why so few people have ever heard about the thing he says he cannot forget. This is my experience. This is a real true story. If you keep silence, this tragedy will continue. 
And people, they just don't want to touch this evil. Because if you touch this evil, maybe at the end of the day, you may not be able to tackle this uh, the consequences. That is my guess. That's the surgeon, Brandon. That's the surgeon, everybody, who um, was the one who was forced to do a live organ harvesting uh, extraction forced by the CCP in 1995, Dr. Enver Totti. And I, and I uh, brought him as a coalition with, Dr., with David Kilgore and David uh, Mattis and Ethan Goodman. And I'll show you that in a minute for the skeptics out there, because this is such a hard to believe issue. But he extracted the organs from a prisoner of conscience, I think a Uyghur Muslim, um, and, and lived to tell about it. So there's 52 pieces of evidence of this. It's, it's crazy. It's a new form of evil. Yeah, yeah, it's horrific. Uh, it's just amazing that you took this on, man, and that you're still around and talking about it. It really is. Like, I wish you the best. We want nothing horrible to happen to you. And that's why being like this and getting this message out is a great thing to do. But good God, man, you're, you're taking on the whole beast. That's remarkable. Absolutely. And as I said to Ricky the other day, um, if there's anybody that you know that would like to have me on uh, to talk about this, I would love to, I would appreciate it because to fail to support the good and to fail to expose evil is unacceptable. And I am risking my life. I do this for no name, for no reward, for no donations. Um, I, I street, you know, I, I, I'm heavily banned. I'm heavily censored um, because I go for the, I go for the raw truth. You know, what is a man or a woman or a person who cannot make the world a better place. So here we are, exposing this evil. It's incredible. Which is amazing what you're doing. And thank you for doing it. Thank you, brother. I have a, another clip, if I may. Please. Uh, to share. Yeah, I'm just taking you guys on a wonderful journey uh, because a lot of people haven't heard about this. They don't know what's going on. But uh, this is the other clip that I wanted to share with you. And at the end of the clip, it's about a two-minute long clip, um, there is a talk or, or an inter, another talk, an interve- investigative uh, um, recording of an actual doctor. Because what we did is that we disguised the, inter- the investigators, Chinese investigators, they were working with uh, the coalition to investigate the persecution of Falun Gong and the organ harvesting, actually called into the hospitals. There were at least 17 taped conversations recorded for admitting that they have fresh organs and they have an on demand and they just will pick them out of a, like a lobster out of a tank from a, from a labor camp and blood match them, forcefully blood match them. And then the victim, the, the victim will be laid out on a, uh, an operating room. The buyer will be coming from Pakistan, from Korea, from you, from the, from London, from America, where the organ tourism rates, organ tourism rates skyrocketed between 1999 and uh, in, in, two, in about 2016, 2017, uh, by 30 to 40%. They're still doing it, by the way, and they're selling the organs also back to their own citizens, particularly the high-ranking uh, uh, officials who have been affected by the, the CCP virus. But here we go. Here's, yeah, here's another clip, if I may. By 2000, Falun Gong practitioners were disappearing into labor camps in mass numbers. At the same time, Chinese hospitals began promoting their organ transplant expertise. I'm uh, David Maidith, and with me is uh, David Kilgore. We've been asked to investigate allegations that uh, there has been harvesting of organs of Falun Gong in China. Uh, David Kilgore is a former member of parliament and former cabinet minister for Asia Pacific, and I'm a a Winnipeg lawyer uh, doing immigration, refugee, and international human rights law in Winnipeg. And we have uh, now... uh, done uh, our investigation and we're producing this report. And I didn't know whether it was true or not. And so uh, my task initially was to try to figure out a a way of approaching the issue so that I could either prove it or disprove it and not just walk away and say, I don't know. The number of executions in China varied widely depending on who was counting. But Matus says no matter which number he used, the number of executions and the number of organs didn't add up. The transplant volumes increased substantially uh, after the persecution of Falun Gong began. And I mean, there's a lot of other evidence, but uh, the most likely explanation for the increase is, is the Falun Gong. We pursued every investigative trail we could find. In the report, you will see that there are 18 different avenues of proof and disproof we, we considered and evaluated. 
our bottom line conclusion after considering everything as best we could was that the allegations are true. We believe them to be true, that this uh, harvesting is indeed happening. Maida says what made Falun Gong organs especially attractive was the practitioner's healthy lifestyle. They do not drink or smoke. On many of the recordings of phone calls made to more than 100 Chinese hospitals, doctors assure callers that transplant organs are from healthy Falun Gong practitioners. So you could just pick them out of a, of a tank, like a loft out of a tank or a wet market, cut them open and just sell their organs, fueling a multi-billion dollar business. Uh. Uh, and then an audio only audience check for the link uh, expanding reality podcast.com the video will be up there for all of these clips as well as in the bottom all the clips and every way to find him is there's gonna be a lot of clip uh, links guys so definitely check that out uh, but also there were some subtitles there for that information but yes essentially that's what they said we're gonna pick them out like lobsters in a tank because they're on demand god it's messed up man on demand on demand so for the skeptics out there thinking well this has been going on throughout the world and you know, organ harvesting is nothing new. You're right, but there's no other regime on the face of the earth, Brandon, and, and folks that are listening that are harvesting hundreds and thousands of innocent prisoners of conscience, sending them to state-mandated hospitals, over 3,000 state-mandated hospitals, turning their doctors into murderers, uh, initiating and initializing, uh, using the secret police, the uh, PLA, which is the, the People's Liberation Army, the Chinese military, sending hundreds and thousands of Falun Gong, also known as Falun Gong practitioners, in concealed cattle cars, just like the Nazis did with the Jews, to be state mandated hospitals, cutting out their organs while alive. And these are people who are alive while the blood is flowing. Okay, And I want to show you the testimony in a moment of me and the investigators um, for all the skeptics out there. And I love the skeptics because when I, when you get them on your side, Brandon, uh, that, that, then, you know, n nothing can, can stop. Uh, nothing can stop uh, the irrefutableness of this. And um, this was um, at the International Tribunal of Natural Justice, uh, an inquiry into human trafficking and child sex abuse. This is where I got to listen to uh, Roland Bernard, who is the Dutch elite banker, who talked about how he was given everything. He, he, was talk, he was working with serious global elites where the last stage of domination, world domination, is child sacrifice. And he refused to sacrifice a child and he was stripped of everything, right? He was thrown all the way back into, into normal life, um, stripped of everything. And he's still on his, uh, uh, you know, running for his life because he's testifying. But this is from MK Ultra victims, child trafficking, um, and so we were invited to London to testify. There was a three-day event. This is the first day. And then right after this presentation, which we delivered with, as you can see, David Kilgore, Ethan Gutman on the left-hand side, and then there's Dr. N. Batotti, the bus driver, to, surgeon turned bus driver, who testified in front of the British Parliament. But listen to just uh, briefly, if I may, just what Dr. David Kilgore has to say about this. Uh, if this is really going on, and this will really... Uh, uh, bring irrefutable evidence. And I think this will really inspire the, uh, the, the skeptics to be on the side of destiny that is truly right. Um, let's take a listen to this. Um, as you've seen on the projection and comments already made, uh, there's a related scourge of organ pillaging, which uh, we're speaking to obviously today. It's been going on, as you've heard, for about 20 years. In mid-2006, uh, um, the Coalition to Investigate the Persecution of Falun Gong asked David Maitis and I uh, to investigate it. We were both went into it with open minds. We were, I think, both of us hoping it wasn't going to be true, but we very quickly discovered that it was true. And um, there's been reference to 50 kinds of evidence. Uh, we, uh, uh, I was a prosecutor for 10 years, so I should know something about evidence. And we, uh, we came up with a our report, a revised report, and then a book called Bloody Harvest. Uh, and we've continued to investigate ever since. We've, uh, we concluded that uh, for 41,500 transplants done in the years 2000 to 2005 in China, the only reasonable 
explanation for sourcing was Falun Gong. Um, here are just two kinds of evidence of the 18 substantive kinds of evidence we found. We, we had people calling to institutions across China, hospitals, prisons, and so on, mostly hospitals, asking if they had Falun Gong organs available. I think you mentioned, Sasha, that, or no, actually it was Robert who mentioned yesterday that Falun Gong don't smoke or drink, they're very healthy, and that's the reason that people wanted Falun Gong organs, and we, we discovered that. And as I think it was mentioned in the film, that only Falun Gong were examined by doctors coming into these forced labor camps. And of course they wondered, why are you uh, examining me uh, when you're torturing me to give up my uh, Falun Gong beliefs? So, uh, and the way it works, of course, is that when uh, somebody arrives when, in Shanghai, the number one people's hospital in Shanghai is where most people go from Europe. Uh, they're uh, blood tested and so on, and then they go out on the computer and they find a match for somebody through this testing of Falun Gong, and, and they go out to the camp and they grab the poor man or woman and they give them a potassium, now it appears, and uh, their liver or whatever is taken out. It's flown to, to Shanghai, and uh, somebody comes back to uh, London with a new liver, and they're probably told they're getting it from a convicted murderer, although of course they don't want it from a convicted murderer, they want it from a Falun Gong practitioner. But uh, this is just absolutely sick beyond belief that this is happening. And I wonder how many of you, probably all of you are aware of it, but I'm always astounded how many people are not aware that this has been going on since 2000. And it's got to stop. And I really think uh, Ethan and Enver will speak about this too. I think we're close to the point where they're going to, where they're going to stop because they're getting so much better. And they haven't stopped yet. They haven't stopped, Brandon. They're continuing, ramping it up. And especially when the, uh, the, the so-called coronavirus, the CCP virus, uh, which we all know is not a virus, by the way, okay, was bioengineered in the Wuhan lab, thanks to the CCP. And the same prime minister, the military dictator, uh, which you're going to see in the last clip I have for you, Jiang Zemin, his sons, the same military dictator was, is behind this genocide of the Falun Gong, um, ramping it up because the cadres got infected and they wanted to, um, you know, uh, do transplantation to give new organs. So they ramped it up with the Falun Gong. So there's much more death that has happened during this time as well. So yeah, it hasn't stopped to continue to this day. Well, and it's like these people can just do whatever the hell they want to their bodies and trash the hell out of them because they've got a person that's been taking great care of themselves. It's in spiritual harmony uh, to just go gank organs from it's, it's like we've seen this in Hollywood, you know, with not, not this horrible. We've seen it with uh, these, um, you know, future dystopian type uh, things to where society is to a point where you can clone yourself and then just kind of keep yourself in a bag or something. And then you just pull an organ from it. Uh, and, you know, this is the that maybe is the next step. But really, how about we just enjoy our mortality and we just don't, you know, uh, there's just something about this, man, this this sick transhumanism kind of agenda. I'm going to take from this healthy to keep my. Uh, now, do, there there are just so many ways that my mind's going with this, man. Do you think that these people are aware? It, they have to know that you can't get an organ in two days. And that if they're sold, hey, let's go to China because we can get it there a lot faster. I mean, is there no kind of two and two that they're putting together? Or is this just an unknown unknown where people don't even know this is happening and they think it's altruistic? Nada should be knowing because it's well aware and you actually are criminal doing this because this has come out. The China Tribunal, which I'll play in a moment as well, uh, has stated as well that it's criminally complicit. You are you are com complicit in murder if you decide to go to to, uh, to China under the CCP to get an organ uh, transplant from these uh, prisons of conscience. Um, there are four... Uh, uh, countries that banned organ tourism completely and has made it illegal for any of their citizens to go. One has been, uh, funnily enough, Israel, the Knesset, uh, has uh, um, established a transplantation law in 2008, banning any Israeli citizen to go to China to get a, a, an organ transplant. Um, number two is Taiwan. That's why China is so, is the CCP, not China, because we have to differentiate the Chinese people have got nothing to do with this. The Ch China and the Chinese people are wonderful, beautiful, beloved people, an ancient divine land, which I'm honored to have learned and be part of for the last 22 years. They have been brutally persecuted and demonized and slandered and attacked 
by the CCP. This is solely on the sh uh, 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 accusing and, and, and um, exposing the CCP for what they are, this reign of terror, this mass murdering regime that has killed more life than two world wars combined. So these donors, uh, so these buyers know exactly what they're getting themselves into now. But before, when it was life and death, they didn't. And they would, they, 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 because the Chinese communist regime, as you saw in the clip, they were promoting, they had 20 websites, Brandon, promoting the hell out of this thing. So I was like, holy crap, promoting their organ harvesting business, their global enterprise. They're in bed with the Western corporations and Western and, 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 uh, and Western mainstream media. There was a database of 1.95 million spies that were leaked to show all their addresses, their, their titles, even their code names infiltrating into the highest officials, official positions of Pfizer, AstraZeneca, the U.S. government, the U.S. military, okay, <laughs> uh, the U.K., the Australian military, the, the Australian government. It's that crazy and that's sick. So um, they know full well now, and they are criminally complicit, uh, and, and they have to be put on notice. There's a notice of liability that if you decide to do this, you are liable, regardless of whether it's a life or death. This is forced. This is transplantation murder. And if you think you're going to justify, well, my kid needs to this, I, I get you. But you've got to go on a list on a consensual basis. Otherwise, it's medical murder and you're complicit. That's the thing. I'm sure I'm sure a lot of people know this is going on. Like you think of the adrenochrome crowd and all of that. They know for damn sure that this is going on impossible and that, you know, maybe they can just do whatever the hell they want. But uh, there are people like, like exactly what you said, man. And we empathize with those folks and they may not know. But here's what the truth of it is. If you are going to China to get organs, here's where they're coming from. I mean, more than likely. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's been documented, even though the uh, CCP has tried to cover up with, with deception and lies and propaganda and infiltration, huge infiltration to the criminal journalists, mainstream media, bribing and paying off the mainstream media to peddle the propaganda from the CCP. You've got the Confucius Institutes. You know, I sat down with an FBI agent, two FBI agents in Atlanta, Georgia, when I was receiving death threats. And they said to me, even the the student uh, uh, associations of the universities uh, from Berkeley, from um, uh, UGA, University of Georgia to Georgia State to others, uh, uh, they have infiltrated, the CCP have infiltrated into the student bodies. The presidents of these student associations are not students, they're CCP loyalists and spies and agents. So um, even the United Nations, but luckily, the China Tribunal, which I want to play in a minute, I got about two or three more clips for your audience. And this has been a jam-packed, juicy uh, session, brother. Oh, yeah. I appreciate it with all my heart, man, because this is beyond a reasonable doubt. And I'm going to share at the end where people can learn about this beautiful practice, because I'm sure it's not all doom and gloom, ladies and gents, because there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but I just wanted to get the heaviness out uh, on the open. And quite frankly, this might, this might sound sick, and crazy, but the irony of it is that why wouldn't you practice something that is so beneficial where the, that, that the Chinese government is no cutting shit. out these organs while alive and selling them for millions of dollars? Wouldn't you practice something? You know Dude, what I mean? That is a brilliant <laughs> way to put it because, yes, we talk about this a lot. If they tell you not to, and especially if they're snatching your ass up and murdering you for it, then that is exactly what you should be doing. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm right. Yeah, that's Come how you know. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. As Bob Marley said, you know, uh, you know, Zion train is coming my way. I'm getting on that train, man. Hell yeah. You know, I'm right there with you, brother. You. Yeah. So here we go. This is from the Human Rights Council, September 24, 2019. I actually used this video to send to all the... Uh, the consul generals as a warning on Twitter. I haven't been banned yet, but I said, every Chinese official beware. Anyone that is still complicit in this is going to be charged for genocide. And I sent this to them. Take a look at what, just to scare them, you know, ruffle their feathers, making them, make it, making them stand on edge because anyone that's convinced that is complicit in this are, uh, are cornered rats on the sinking ship and are going to be brought to justice. Take a listen to this. Mr. Vice President, the Durban Declaration affirms the urgent need to prevent, combat, and eliminate all forms of trafficking in persons, including organ trafficking. 
China Tribunal, a People's Tribunal chaired by Sir Jeffrey Nice, considered all available evidence and concluded that forced organ harvesting from prisoners of conscience, including the religious and ethnic minorities of Falun Gong and Uyghurs, had been committed for years throughout China on a significant scale and that it continues today. This involves hundreds of thousands of victims. Acting on independent legal advice, the tribunal concluded that commission of crimes against humanity, against Falun Gong and Uyghurs, had been proved beyond reasonable doubt, victim for victim, and death for death, cutting out the hearts and other organs from living, blameless, harmless, peaceable people, constitutes one of the worst mass atrocities of this century. Organ transplantation to save life is a scientific and social triumph, but killing the donor is criminal. Government and international bodies must do their duty not only in regard to the possible charge of genocide, but also in regard to crimes against humanity, which the tribunal does not consider to be less heinous. It is the legal obligation of UN member states and the duty of this council to address this criminal conduct. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. And this is from the China Tribunal, Brandon. So that was that was an incredible uh, uh, deliberation. Um, and uh, yeah, this is this is crazy, guys. It really is. I mean, it's insane what is going on. It's insane. And I, like I said, it's fascinating that you're doing this, man. Uh, and I love that you sent that out to everybody on Twitter. Like, get fucked, man. I love it. Uh, Damn and I, right, man. Well, and I share your um, I share your assessment of the Chinese people because, like I said, I was there. I, I The government is very different than the people. Just like over here, man, our government does not represent us. It represents some version of us that people think that we are, but we're not that. We're this. We're these people. Uh, and the Chinese people, man, some of the sweetest, most kind. I mean, I would walk around and not speak the language at all, but I could communicate with them and they could communicate with me in such a clear, beautiful way. And I'm still brothers with some people over there that I met that we don't speak the same language. We just send emojis back and forth and it's perfect. And just some of the sweetest, most kind, most amazing people. So the delineation between the CCP and the Chinese people is something I'm right there with you and hundred percent back you on. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, it's just so important to, 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 to really realize. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm here in Vietnam. And these people are just so beautiful. They're hardworking, they're loyal to their families, they love their children, they love their grand, their elders. They're very religious and spiritual people, bowing to Buddha, praying. Every single shop has an altar to uh, respect the elders. It's really powerful and beautiful. The 5,000 years of Chinese divine culture, amazing, immaculate, magnanimous, and anciently beautiful, um, decimated by this reign of terror, this Chinese evil, this communist specter. I don't even want to call it Chinese because it's an insult to China and the Chinese people, but this reign of terror. And um, with that, I, want, I have another clip for you. I have two more clips, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Um, I have one from the China Tribunal, um, just to share a little bit more about it. Um, this is from uh, the China Tribunal on the Independent Tribunal into Forced Organ Harvesting from Prisons of Conscience. Uh, to take a listen to this, um, I'll just play a few minutes of this. Would it be possible in today's day and time that a government would incarcerate a million people, blood test them, get their tissue samples, put that in a database, and then sell their organs around the world? Would it be possible that professional doctors would commit such atrocity to extract organs from a live body? Because it's such a huge and unbelievable crime, it's impossible to accept it at the first sight. Please rise. China Tribunal, final sitting. Sir Jeffrey Nice, QC, and Chair. Please be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is the judgment of the tribunal. For over a decade, the People's Republic of China has stood publicly accused of acts of cruelty 
and wickedness that match the cruelty and wickedness of medieval torturers and executioners. The China Tribunal is being led by Sir Geoffrey Nees, QC, world leading expert on genocide, crimes against humanity. He agreed to establish a, an independent tribunal with a number of other distinguished colleagues and to shine a light on a very dark place. It should be made now, I want to share with you that this is what Dr. Rainer Fulmich um, has shared, uh, Brandon, that with this, uh, uh, this so-called, you know, with, with, the, with the whole pandemic and, you know, the, 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 the jubity jew uh -huh. uh, jubity 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 jab, blah, 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 blah. You know, you don't want to get you banned off. You, gonna, yeah, the okey, the okey, oh, this is, this, go ahead and say whatever you want, because this is not going on YouTube. There is no oh, way, but on, it okay. will be on several other places. So you guys just don't, don't worry about it. It's going to be plenty of other places. So just speak how you speak. But yeah, YouTube okay. isn't worthy of this conversation. So, right, the, 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 exactly. Thank you very much for, for, for saying that. The bioweapon death shot, the vaccine, the, 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 the COVID-19. Reina Fulmich is actually, has, has said that the ICC, the Supreme Court, all these courts have been compromised by these complicit world governments in crimes against humanity, okay? These are experimental bioweapons breaking the Nuremberg Code, the genocide uh, uh, treaties, um, the Statue of Rome, okay? The Nuremberg Codes, you cannot force anybody to take these experimental death shots that are killing hundreds and thousands of people and maiming millions, okay? We have all the numbers, we have all the stats. So my point is, just like the China Tribunal, the independent tribunals that are being set up because the courts are all complicit, the infiltration of the CCP is huge, the globalist cabal, they are making fortunes off the slave labor and the organ harvesting and the child trafficking and the adrenochrome of the Chinese people and people worldwide. I'm dealing with a lot of survivors as well, uh, as I was talking about uh, from, from uh, one particular island, okay? A hint, hint, I don't want to get into that because it's very risky business, as well as mention the names of these world leaders um, uh, who are complicit in these crimes. But my point is as well, Dr. Raina Fulmich has said that it's going to come from the people, the people's tribunals, the rise of the independent sovereign citizen of each country, starting in America, because the Americans have the legal right to defend of, uh, the Second Amendment. If it wasn't for the Second Amendment, all communist countries, all communist uh, dictatorships, the first thing they do to render the people helpless is take away the guns and brainwash them to become misinformed. Because a well-armed and a well-informed well society, the globalists or the, or the satanic uh, cabal, these demonic forces are incredibly fearful of. They won't, they, they can't do anything because they're cornered rats. They, they, they're cowards. They're evil. But when they take away your guns, like Mao Zedong did, they can destroy everything. The communist countries, Stalin, Nazi uh, Germany, they took away the guns, rendering the Australians. Look what's Austra happening in Australia. Uh, uh, you beat me to guns. it. Australia. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Now, to what you said on those lists of two things, America is definitely one of those. We're, we're well armed, but we are very misinformed or they're trying to misinform us. But people like you and I, we're doing this the right way. So, yeah, we're one of those things and we're we're very armed, man. And so this is why I, I agree with you completely. So do you think that they're doing it backwards in the U.S., that they're misinforming the hell out of us to discombobulate everything, divide us even further, even though we have all the ammunition? Absolutely. And Dr. Robert Malone talked about this as well. Mass formation psychosis. Peter McCullough, also Dr. Peter McCullough. I'm not, I'm not sure if you had them yet on your uh, your shows. I, I wish they were. I hope they will come on your show. Uh, as well as Dr. Um, Peter Bringen. Dr. Peter Bringen, who wrote the book, um, bear with me, he wrote the book, uh, and this ties into the CCP, actually. But he wrote the book, and it's a must-read. Uh, that's what Dr. Peter McCullough has said. Uh, Robert uh, F. Kennedy Jr. talking about the real Anthony Fauci. He was a monstrous uh, 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 scumbag who is colluding with the Chinese Communist Party. But he wrote Dr. P uh, Peter Bregan, who is the father, who has been coined the father, one of the fathers of psychiatry. He wrote the book COVID-19 and the Global Predators. We are the prey, folks. We are the prey. And he mentioned on the Alex Jones show the other day that the predators, all the global predators, Brandon, 
are dealing and colluding and in bed with none other than the Chinese Communist Party. Bill Gates, who do you think funded the CCP technology that was, in, that was downloaded into the algorithmic patterns of the COVID-19 Moderna Pfizer vaccines? Who do you think sits on the board of Pfizer and AstraZeneca? The Chinese Communist Party officials. So when you all do the, do the sourcing of where the money is coming from and where the ties are going to and where the roads are leading, it all is going to the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. Even who do you think back miles are done? It starts with an R, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, you know. So there you have it. So when people say, well, what has this got to do with me? And what is, well, who cares about the CCP? Well, first of all, imagine it was your families. They were taken out in the middle of the night, the middle of the afternoon, the middle of the morning, out of your work environment, out of your education facilities, out of your own homes, thrown into a mobile execution band they never seen before. Wouldn't you want to do something? That's why I decided to do something. Again, to fail to support the good and to fail to expose evil is unacceptable. Expanding reality, your podcast, Brandon Thomas, I tell you, I take my hat off to you because your audience are getting the whole truth and nothing but the truth. You're risking your life as well. You're a target individual because you've, like me, like all your folks out there, have, have felt something and have unplugged from the matrix and inside there is a will to fight. The globalists and these evil satanic demons have dismantled purposefully through this mass formation psychosis, the ability to discern what is right and what, what is wrong. And they have, they've, they've weakened and lessened and watered down the will to fight. And this is where we are right now. So thank God for people like you. Thank God for, 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 for people like uh, uh, your, your, your folks and your audience, because this is what's going to, this is who is going to change the world. I agree with that. And there is like this great awakening type of a deal going on. You said you were spiritual as well. I'm, I'm, I mirrored those um, preclivities. I, I definitely, uh, definitely consider myself more that than religious and definitely more that than atheist. So uh, I kind of want to ask you a tricky question here. Now, at some level, do you subscribe to the unity consciousness idea? Like we're all one thing experiencing itself subjectively? I do believe in my own understanding that we are all created in a divine creating uh, um, image, but we stand alone on our own conscious uh, efforts to understand and conscious discernment. And it is the responsibility for every human adult being over the age of 18 to stand either to choose. We all have a choice. We all have a human choice. We are part of the collective conscience. We breathe the same blood, breathe the same air, we bleed the same blood. You have a head and two eyes on your shoulders, and I have eyes and ears. Okay. However, it's up to the individual themselves to choose whether they want to stand on the right side of destiny or the wrong. They, they have a choice to either speak no evil, see no evil, hear no evil, take profit over human life, continue doing business with this mass murdering regime, continue to allow China to infiltrate into these intelligence agencies and their governing bodies, to run their governing bodies. They have, uh, you know, and to keep quiet, to have their celebrities in Hollywood bow down to the Chinese Communist Party, deny Taiwan's existence, deny the Hong Kong protests as their liberation. So, yes, I do believe we're, we, we, are, we are created under the same unalienable rights um, and um, in terms of the human essence, but each person to each his own. One makes one's own path. Could not agree more. I, I uh, also just kind of feel like uh, folks like you and I, you know, I, I got an answer to my question. You're very protected from a spiritual sense. I can just tell it. You could feel it about you. Uh, we don't even have to tell people that you and I are not suicidal and that we would never kill ourselves. We don't even have to do any of that shit because they just know it. I think we're really at a time to where this information is coming out because it's a necessary part of our awakening collectively. And I think that there's uh, the, the horrible things here that have been doing this to instigate this great awakening are now, you know, what do we say their chickens are coming home to roost, right? Um, and so now it's time for all of this to switch off. And this is what we're doing here by getting the information out. So I just send you all the love and the protection in the world, man. And I actually have some people that I'm going to connect you with to kind of boost that, even though you don't need it. Uh, but it might be just something nice to have in your back pocket. But uh, I can't thank you enough for the information that you've been putting out here, man. 
Thank you, brother. I have one more clip, and then I've got a couple of websites for people to go take a look at, and uh, we can call it a night. I know, you know, sp- I, I got a little bit of ADD, you know, I know people, you know, there's only a certain amount of information they can process, but man, it's been an honor and a privilege, but allow me to play one more clip, if I may. Oh, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was just saying you're awesome. So thank you for doing this. Yeah. You too, brother. You are such a rock star and a legend, man. I tell you. Um, this is called gener- uh, gen- genocide of a lifetime. Forgive this. There's a certain couple of typos uh, because we, me and my team, before our, our offices got shut down, we actually did uh, this video. But um, our offices got shut down because we became uh, very popular on mainstream media, on mm-hmm. social media, by the way, on Facebook, and uh, we had to close for safety concerns. But uh, this is one of the videos we did to get the word out there. Uh, so forgive a little bit of the typos, ladies and gents, but here we go. I think the message is, uh, is is more profound. So here we go. There are no human rights in China. And the most outrageous example of no human rights in China is killing a peaceful community of Falun Gong practitioners and uh, and Uyghurs who are Muslims and Tibetan Buddhists and Christians, house Christians, for their organs, kidneys, livers, and so on, and then selling the organs to wealthy Chinese or foreigners, and the people are killed in the process. The belief that I have, I share with David Kilgore, that organ harvesting is widespread in China, and it is restricted almost exclusively to Falun Gong practitioners. The Falun Gong after the Chinese regime of today what the Jews were to the Nazis during the war. And we should all take note of this and look at China with new eyes. There's no evidence that Falun Gong is a cult of any sort. There's no evidence um, of of political action to try and bring down the Chinese government. Um, There's no evidence of anything other than a a deep desire to be left alone to practice um, their spiritual beliefs in peace and to not be locked up and murdered. David and I have met Falun Gong practitioners in probably 50 countries. Or even more, maybe. Okay. All walks of life, all uh, ages, all backgrounds, all education, I've found them to be a wonderful group of people. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't disagree with any of that. I mean, uh, Falun Gong, uh, uh, first of all, it's not even an organization because it's a set of exercises with a spiritual foundation. Yeah. Everything's on the Internet. You don't pay anything. You don't sign up to anything. You can start whenever you want. You can stop whenever you want. You don't even have to tell anybody you're doing it. You can, their principles are... Are, are very uh, simple and ethical. And, and I mean, all of that is true. So, uh, you know, before we leave, I would love to uh, just to share where people can practice and learn about this. And this particular website, um, again, you know, I just want to share about this practice. I don't leave no name. I seek no reward. I just, out of a good conscience of doing the right thing, helping these people because this is a genocide of a lifetime. This is a new form of evil. This is a mass murdering regime that has infiltrated even to our own uh, uh, normal societies are doing this to the people. So for more people, for more people to understand what this, what's going on, this is a great website. It really condenses and takes you onto a journey of concise understanding um, of what, what Falun Gong is, Brandon, why 100 million people have been targeted and the forced organ harvesting in China. And people can move down the website and um, can look at the, 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 the award-winning documentaries as well. Uh, Badass Beauty Queen is also great. That's Anastasia Lin, two-time uh, Miss World Canada, who has uh, who is barred from, uh, from China from participating because she practices Falun Gong. And she went on her... Uh, her uh, um, expedition to expose them with her crown, which is brilliant. If anyone wants to help end the persecution, they can just go to Act Now, um, and there's a, there's a number of things that you can do. Contact your, your politician, help rescue loved ones, be a digital advocate, host an event. I always share that any educators out there that have a class of two, 300 people, any professors who are watching your, uh, your show can actually, um, you know, uh, uh, show some of the uh, the, the documents, uh, the document documentaries, and stay informed, etc. Um, but that's um, balloninfo.net, and I can send you all the websites as well. Um, another thing I would also recommend is if anyone wants to learn about Falun Gong or try Falun Gong, you can you can practice free. It's a one hour, one point five hour webinar. 
you know, teaches you about the exercises. Um, as you can see, it's called Falun Gong, also known as Falun Duff, a traditional Chinese mind and body practice, all free of charge, based on truthfulness, compassion, tolerance. Everything's free of charge. These are all the exercises um, that you can learn. Uh, and uh, again, you can uh, go to learnfalungong.com to learn more about this practice. It's beautiful, it's free, and just it, it really is incredible uh, testament to health and wellness. Um, I also would advise people to go to the China Tribunal, chinatribunal.com, and you can read the reports. And uh, this is mainly for the skeptics out there, as well as end tra uh, doctors against forced organ harvesting. This is for the, prof the medical professionals, the doctors, the lawyers, the nurses. Um, this is for the PhDs, because this really, the doctors against forced organ harvesting uh, holds the reports of Mattis and Kilgore. The Honorable David Kilgore, this man here, he passed away just about a couple of a couple of days ago, so um, unfortunately. But he did great work before he left. Again, there's 33 pieces of evidence, all here, black and white, that you can that you can listen to as well and watch. This is all the evidence, the ethical guidelines, and here's the big one. This is uh, endtransplantabuse.org, where. People, particularly the, the, the skeptics out there, can go and uh, to read all the reports, the academic articles, the government reports, the NGO, uh, NGO reports, the books, the documentaries, um, the, 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 the investigator reports. Um, as you can see when it loads, um, hopefully it loads soon. This is the slaughter from Ethan Goodman, a 10-year investigative uh, report, state organs, and bloody harvest. You don't have to. You don't have to uh, to buy them, guys. Uh, it would be great to support the, the authors, especially Ethan Goodman. But all the, uh, the 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 reports are here. This is all the introductions, the victims, the state-sponsored killing. And if I may, I just want to show you also the um, coalition roundtable. If you go to the video section, all on the right-hand side, and click on the coalition roundtable, you'll be brought to. A phenomenal series, a documentary series. Hopefully, it loads. Uh, I don't know why it's not loading, but um, the, uh, the 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 roundtable coalition. Here we go. It's a complete series, and um, it shows. Uh, let's see. Sorry, it's a little bit. Uh, my, maybe my internet's not doing so well. There's a little bit of interference, but that's okay. No, you're fine. Um, you're fine. Okay. Uh, it's a it's a it's a four it's a four uh, series. Here we go. The Investigative and Reports is a four-series uh, 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 compilation on the investigative reports, the victims and numbers, the suppression by the CCP, and the legislation and activism. And it's all run by, uh, by Chris Chappelle from China Uncensored, a great uh, uh, YouTube channel. Um, and that's about it, guys. Oh, and one more thing, uh, Brandon, if I may. The Epoch Times, this is a phenomenal editorial series. The Epoch Times was created by... Um, fellow Falun Gong practitioners from China who escaped China after practicing Falun Gong spent all their own money to create an editorial media that has skyrocketed and mushroomed in popularity to become one of the largest and most popular independent newspapers of, it, of its time. And um, it, they wrote a publication called The Spectre of Communism is Ruling Our World. This is for the avid readers out there who really want to divulge into how the spectre of communism is ruling our world, how it's infiltrated into the, uh, the political system, the destruction of the family and the, and, and the legal system. And especially, this is my favorite parts, infiltrating the West, part one and part two. So uh, with that, guy, uh, brother and everybody listening, Thank you so much for letting me come on your show, man, and share this. And I look forward to seeing you again. Really. You kidding me? This was unbelievable. You have an open invite anytime. You and I have a lot more to talk about. And I'm going to squeeze a, a secret space conversation out of you soon. Just if, if nothing else, we can just have some fun exploring the ideas. All the ways to find you, brother, and everything that you're talking about are, of course, going to be linked down in the show notes. I can't wait to start practicing Falun Gong. I can't wait. Like That seems like the answer right now, right? Is everybody just start a mild, incorporate a little bit of this practice into your day, and let's see what kind of actual power that we can come together and have, because it's being suppressed like crazy. So let's see what we got, you know, before they start uh, snatching us up for our organs. I'll, I'll start practicing it for sure. Uh, Mitchell, I can't thank you enough, dude. This was unbelievable. Thank you so much, brother. And just hang in there. Keep fighting the good fight, man. We're here with you. 
Absolutely, YouTube brother. Thank you, folks, for, for, for seeing uh, everything. Please spread it far and wide. And again, it's been a pleasure and honor, and I'll be seeing you so uh, shortly. What an incredible guy uh, doing the work that he is doing and risking his life to do it. Uh, Mitchell Nicholas Gerber and all the ways to find him are going to be located down in the show notes, guys. Definitely check out all the resource links as well. This was a lot to put together, so make sure that you check that out. He did a wonderful job, and I'm grateful uh, for his time and his expertise and for what he's doing. Shine in the light in that darkness, brother, and, and we're grateful and we back you. So everybody also check out the resource links for the Falun Gong. Uh, I'm excited to get into it. I'm, I'm excited to see what kind of ripple effect we can have if we all start uh, engaging in that activity and, and make some real change. And I, I'm interested. Like I said, I, I have a lot of thoughts on it and, and the ramifications of it are pretty interesting if we were to all pick it up. So uh, it's something. And if you guys want to jump in on something like that together, let me know. Uh, email the show uh, down in the show notes at expandingrealitypodcast.com. That's also where you can find the full video of this because YouTube does not deserve it. So down there also, guys, foodforestabundance.com. Uh, Libsyn, if you'd like to start your own podcast, uh, our Amazon affiliate link. If you're going to buy anything on Amazon, we ask that you run it through that link. It helps the show and that's it. Uh, Opus as well, the Organization for Paranormal Understanding and Support. So you guys have a lot of links down there to check out. So make sure that you do so. Thanks again for everybody listening. And I know that this was a heavy one to get through. And uh, just thanks again uh, for being willing to shine a light in that darkness with us here because that's what it's all about it's the recognition uh that's how it can't hide anymore so go this beautiful place guys uh, it's a heavy world and it's beautiful and magical but also mixed with some interesting vibrations so let's do our best to just pick up a piece of litter buy somebody around a coffee or a meal uh practice some falun gong see how that works out for you as well as while you're doing all that get out of the left hand lane of course huge pain in the ass and then of course guys go out into this beautiful place whatever the hell it is and y'all just be good to one another thank you so much for listening we'll see you next time